This here is the third PC that I'm giving away as part of our Cannonball for the Cure charity event, which the winner has already been selected, but I wanted to detail what this Stormtrooper build is all about, everything that's in it, how it performs, as well as the few uh, little quirks and features that I discovered along the way of building it. So let's go ahead and talk about the Stormtrooper build. Today's UFD Tech video is brought to you by ASRock and their all new Z690 Tai Chi motherboard. It's got support for Intel's latest 12th generation processors, has a 20 phase power design to deliver all of the power you could want, and supports up to DDR5 6400 megahertz. And those DDR5 slots are reinforced on the motherboard itself. Two PCI Express 5.0 by 16 slots, as well as an additional PCI Express 4.0 by 16 slot. And the PCI Express 5.0 has ASRock surface mount technology, which means it has better signal flow and maximizes stability with those high speeds that you're gonna get on that. And then it has tons of other features that make it a really practical board. Two Thunderbolt 4 Type C ports, two USB 3.2 Gen 2 rear ports, a killer E3100 2.5 gig LAN, as well as Intel Gigabit LAN, and then Wi-Fi 6E on the killer AX1675 port with Bluetooth. And then to top it all off, it's a looker with ASRock's unique Tai Chi style that comes in with the clockwork design. This thing is a fantastic motherboard so check it out at the link in the video description big thanks again to ASRock for sponsoring today's video so the total street MSRP for this build is roughly $1,750 that's not including scalp or pricing but let's see what we can get for that decent little chunk of cash with a few exceptions being made here and there not because I necessarily wanted to pick the least price to performance, but rather because I was trying to make a whole and complete system rather than trying to optimize every little bit. So let's go ahead and start off with the color scheme. This actually happened accidentally after I discovered that the case, the motherboard, and the GPU all kind of aligned in the same black and white color scheme that you see here before you today. The Strix Z590A, which is the motherboard that we used for this, is silver and black, and it complements the black and white white GPU that Galax sent over, which is their RTX 3060 EX white. It actually has a lot of black lettering on it that makes it not just a pure white GPU like we saw with the Zotac build from last week. Additionally, Galax sent over the Revolution REV01 case right here in white as well, and you can see that it has a pretty decent white and black mix with this diagonal mesh stripe going across the front to kind of show you the RGB fans that are up front, so it just kind of naturally fell into place. The CPU cooler that I decided to use for this was the Noctua NHD15, specifically the LTT edition. This was one of the very first CPU coolers that I picked up when I moved back to the United States back in 2019, and it was the time that Linus and Noctua announced their partnership, so I picked this up, and whoever won this is getting an LTT edition CPU cooler, which is pretty dope. However, the NHD15 Chromax Black is just all black, and when I looked at it initially after I built it, it just felt like the Twin Tower cooler was kind of creating a black hole in the middle of the PC. But then I discovered that they make these tower covers that you can purchase as an add-on for about 30 bucks, which then I could make uh, complement the black and white color scheme that we have going on around here. So overall, I really like the aesthetics of it. Obviously, it's being complemented by the black and white cable extensions from Asia Horse as well. But there's a little bit that I don't like. However, we'll talk about the RGB aesthetic portion of it in a second. Under this CPU cooler is the i7-11700. 100K, the eight core 16 thread Rocket Lake chip on the Z590 motherboard. And I got a lot of questions as I was building these. Why did you pair the Z590 and the 11700K with the 3060? And that's simply because these are the parts I had lying around and I thought that they aesthetically fit better with the RTX 3060. And additionally, I went with 11th gen here as opposed to a 10850K, which would have been much better priced to performance. So I could get the full speeds out of the PCI Express 4.0 NVMe 
NVMe drive, which is the Samsung 980 Pro one terabyte that's sitting in here. You can't do that with Rocket Lake, even if you paired it with Z590. So I decided to kind of downgrade the CPU a little bit to Rocket Lake as opposed to the previous gen in order to get that better overall PCI Express experience. The RAM is Corsair Vengeance Pro RGB, 16 gigs, DDR4 3200, nothing special there, just in black. They don't make black and white kits as far as I'm aware. Maybe Corsair should look into that. One black, one white it could potentially complement a system like this, although that's a niche market. Maybe I should have done the legwork of picking up two different kits and mixing and matching them myself. I've already mentioned the RTX 3060 from Galax is the GPU here. And then powering all of this is the EVGA 650 watt GT power supply. This thing went on wicked sale on Amazon for like $50. So I picked up a couple of them to use in these mid-tier PC builds that I'm getting around to right now. I have a couple still sitting on my shelf, so you might see them in more PC builds upcoming, but it's enough to power the i7 plus the 3060, no problem. Additionally, what's being given away with this PC is the Galaxy Sonar O2 headset, and you can add that into the total color scheme that's going on. Additionally, Galaxy not only provided me with all of this stuff, but they wanted you to know about their brand new redesigned GalaxyStore.net. They'll have monthly GPU giveaways, and you can get graphics cards to gaming gear on their store. They'll have no queues, no waiting lines, no shuffles, and everything has SSL encryption, so it's secure and safe. So check them out at the link in the description. They've had a couple bundles already come up, such as the 3080 LHR gaming gear bundle, as well as the 3070 Ti gaming gear bundle. Check it out at the link in the video description. Big thanks to Galax for providing the GPU, the case, as well as the headset for not only this build, but the giveaway as well. And now quickly, I just wanna talk about the one thing about this build process that definitely bugs me. I really like the REV 01's front panel, looks spectacular. However, there is an issue with like trying to configure RGBs using these front buttons. The way it, it happens, like the modes and the colors and the brightness, like it doesn't make a ton of sense. And I've struggled to like get the RGB modes to be what I want. And eventually I just settled on the rainbow puke because that was the simplest one to just live and let live on that. So Galax, if you can improve the way that the mode setting of the RGB was done up top, just have static colors and not a brightness setting that doesn't allow me to change the colors as well. Like it was, it was really difficult for me to figure out. I'm sure it's in the manual, but it wasn't intuitive. But that's enough about the looks. You probably want to know how this baby performs. i7 11700K plus that RTX 3060, which is Galax's EX White, as I mentioned. We benchmarked this PC at 1080p because that's really where I think the 3060 should be sitting at is high frame rate 1080p rather than like mid frame rate 1440p. You could argue with me all day about that, especially since it has 12 gigabytes of VRAM, but that's what we tested it at. Regardless, in Red Dead Redemption 2 at high settings, we managed 67.4 FPS average. Fortnite came out to 170.8. Cyberpunk 2077 came out 66.8. Three. Crisis Remastered was 106.7, Metro Exodus 82.3, The Witcher 3 we managed 117.5, Assassin's Creed Valhalla came in at 77.6, Control came in at 93.4, and Resident Evil Village a basic 224.2 FPS. So this system performs roughly at 1080p what the RTX 3070 system performed at at 1440p, just showing you the difference between the two GPUs there. But let's talk about thermal for a second because this case does have a tempered glass side panel but it does have the front mesh cutout and we were managed to get our GPU to around 68 degrees Celsius not quite hitting that nice mark in the CPU never got above 52 and that's probably thanks to the fact that there's an NHD 15 which because the NHD 15 is so big I could have put in two exhaust fans up here at the top but there really isn't that much room for it to be super effective so I kind of have the front three fans in taking to blow out this exhaust fan here at the back and we with those temps, you can't argue with it. Cinebench R23, the 11700K, actually beating out the 10700KF. Surprise in multi-core score, 14557 was the multi-core and single core is 1582. So this system does have a stronger CPU than the previous one, and it has a faster SSD, coming in at 6,600 megabytes per second reads and 5,000 megabytes per second write. So the 980 Pro absolutely hitting the top tier speeds that you could tend to expect from PCI Express 4.0. Overall, Solid system, 
looks really good. I'm kind of jealous of the person that I'm giving it away to, but this is not the end of the giveaway PCs. I still have one more Ryzen 7 Plus RTX 3070 Ti, and then also the gaming laptop that we're giving away as well to do videos on. So stay tuned for that. In case you want more, you can check out how I did the live stream for the charity event over in this video right over here. And I'll see you in the next UFD Tech video, my friends. Cheers.